I get you. Now can you picture me rolling, folding nothing behind it's quick to split the bomb with you. Get your back like I'm with you. And even when these things get between us, believe it's your mind. And I admit it when I peek you the first time. Good afternoon. Thanks for coming to the Opportunity Center. My job is to welcome you here today. We appreciate you taking time out of your Sunday to come. Uh, my name is Stephanie Zorn Kasperzak. I'm the executive director of MCOP. Uh, we started on this wonderful adventure with the Opportunity Center several months ago, and um, it's a pleasure to be here today. Um, we've spent the last couple of months uh, going through a transition here with the center, and um, today marks a really exciting uh, turning point for us, all of us together. And um, I want to take a minute just to talk about uh, how we got to this place and then uh, what's coming up in 2020. So as, uh, as all of you in the room, I'm sure know, uh, we went through a transition over the last couple of months. And um, in, true, in our true spirit of collaboration, uh, we worked with the ALCC board and, and Aaron and, and all the board members to make sure that we had a, as smooth a transition as possible. And so we worked very closely together to make sure that every step, step throughout the way um, was smooth, um, that people were taken care of, and that we always focused on togetherness and also on the community because that's what we're all about. Um, for those of you who don't know about MCOP, um, we're the community action agency that services Monroe County. Um, and so we've been around for 55 years. Um, and what we do is uh, we work with communities uh, in order to meet the greatest needs. And so we're always providing opportunities, programs, and services for low-income people and for our community to be better. Um, and it sounds simple, um, and the ways that we do that is through emergency food distribution. Um, we work uh, to house the homeless. Uh, we provide a, a bunch of programs and services for seniors and those who are disabled. And uh, we also do affordable housing development. So there's all kinds of things that we do at MCOP to make the community a better place. And it was very exciting when uh, we, we became uh, more aligned with the center as of October 1st. So the last few months we've been spent, we spent the weeds uh, trying to get things together and make sure it was a smooth transition for staff. Um, and today marks a turning point for us. Uh, this is an exciting event and it really takes us out of the weeds. We've gotten everything figured out and um, we're moving in the right direction. One of the best things that we did is we hired Manuel Hoskins as our director here at the center. So Manuel's been here for two months, um, and hopefully it's been a good two months, but we're really excited to have Manuel come on up and say a few words as well. Hello everyone, I'll be uh, very brief, but first of all, just let me thank uh, my SNBC family for showing up. I want to thank everyone for showing up, but especially the SNBC family for showing up, and also my brothers, uh, the firefighters back there. I really appreciate you uh, coming to support. I'd just like to briefly just say three things. If I could get three T's from everyone, your time, your talent, or your treasures, that would make a difference. If I can get your time, if you have a, maybe a couple hours out of a month uh, that you could volunteer doing something, and your, obviously your treasure would be your money. We can always use that because we can use that to help our young people with uh, other activities that they have. And then your talent. There's something that I know that you can do that you can help us uh, achieve what our goals are here. You know, and our main goal here is just to uh, have productive citizens in our community. I think we all know if we don't catch these, some of our young people at a very young age as they get older, they won't be as productive as they can. But I encourage you all to come down just to assist us sometimes and all your help will be very much appreciated. Thank you. All right, so as we look towards 2020, I want to um, mention to all of you that we have an advisory council. Um, that works with the Opportunity Center to really look at what the needs are, what the programs and services that we're offering, and what we need to do for the future. And so um, there are many of you in the room who are part of that advisory council. And um, we, we met a couple weeks ago, and the first thing we did was came up with our purpose. And so our purpose is to mobilize resources to be able to provide opportunities for everyone. So it sounds like a pretty simple purpose, but everything that we do will work to achieve that, uh, that goal in particular. 
And so as we look to 2020, I just want to mention a few exciting things that are happening. Um, Mayor Clark is here. Thank you. I'm Paula Whitman from City Council. Um, we're going to be starting on Labor Park in the springtime. So Labor Park is going to be right behind us in the parking lot. It's this great opportunity for us to have um, a wonderful place for kids um, to get outdoors and um, enjoy the out outside. So um, that's going to be great. We uh, are going to be working on the kitchen here. So we're going to be rehabbing the kitchen and making a commercial kitchen right here in the center. Uh, and then we have a lot of, of other capital improvements. So thanks to the city of Monroe for supporting us as we move forward. But my main message today is really about togetherness. And um, when all of this uh, started happening several months ago, um, I met with Aaron, and I, I never met Aaron before. Uh, we sat down and we said, you know, if nothing else, we have to do this together. Um, we have to make sure that this is a transition that happens that um, isn't about us versus them. It isn't about um, one nonprofit versus another. It, it's about all of us in our community. And so we have really tried to stick to that um, through the, the past few months. Um, and as we move forward together, and I'm absolutely positive that that's how we'll move forward together. So thanks to the ALCC board members who are here and to ALCC. Um, because, you know, togetherness is a choice. And um, that was something that we chose from the very beginning. And it's, it's been uh, the best way to go. It's made a huge difference. And I look forward to our good work in the community. So with that, I'll invite Aaron up here. And Aaron's the chair of the ALCC board. Um, All right, thank you, Seth. Uh oh, here we go. <laughs> you know I don't speak from a, from a page. That's just not what I do. but. I want to make sure some things are being said and I don't want to forget them. They're very important. First, I also want to thank everyone for, for coming out and supporting this event. It's very important that the community comes together like this. No matter what side of the tracks you come from, it's very important that we as a community come together in support of each other. It's very important we do that. You know, I'm dedicating tonight's Opportunity Summit in honor of Darren Chappelle, Darren Hoskins. Earl Viney, Selma Rankins, Willie Ed Jones, Bobby Hoy, and many others that no longer have a voice, including the visionary and founder of the ALCC, Mr. Arthur Leslow. It's because of Mr. Leslow that this Opportunity Center is here. I never met Mr. Leslow or any of his family members. But the impact that he made on our community is undeniable and worthy of our appreciation. My name is Aaron Lavender. I am currently the chair of the AOCC. I, am, I proudly share this commitment to our community with our amazing board members. Cassandra Little, Ann Opris, Lisa Jennings, Gloria Rafko, Lee Sharp, Martin Freelon, Roz Boswell, and my big brother, Seth and Peastack. Thank you for trusting me with this very important position. I also want to welcome back, starting in 2020, Miss Jan Jett. Welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home. So we ask ourselves, why are we here today? It's because of the sorry Detroit Lions, right? <laughs> I mean, who wants to watch that, right? <laughs> no, all jokes aside, you know, when I came here, I was reminded that kids with dreams become adults with vision. If given the opportunities and tools to succeed. And with that being said, I just want to really thank MCOP and the leadership of Stephanie Manuel Hoskins and the staff, particularly Anthony Hoskins, who stepped in to become the acting AOCC director at a time when this transition was very difficult for all of us. I want to say, yeah, give it up for him, Anthony Hoskins. Thank you, brother. I don't know where you're at, but I really appreciate you. I also, and I have to say these things because I don't want these names to be forgotten. I feel it's important because we've been here for 75 plus years, and I advise my board to stay silent during this transition because 
it makes no sense to be negative, put negative energy out there. So what I ask them to do, let's do the work that we've sent here to do. Let's roll up our sleeves, let's get busy, let's lay under the radar, and let's make a moment like this valuable for our community. Let's let them know that we can work together, that we're in this together. I also want to say thank you to Linda Faye McFadden for, for her work and dedication. I work with Linda to take 20-something kids to Washington, D.C. that never, a lot of them never got out of this community. So thank you, Linda. We're doing that again this year. And thank you, MCLP, for picking up that program and keeping it going. Those are the things that make a difference in our community. I want to thank all the dignitaries, the mayor. Um, the mayor taught me one thing. I, I always tell him this. He, he, he gets really shy. <laughs> don't get, don't get shy, no. He taught me one thing. If one thing he's, he's taught me, he taught me that you can't spell community without the word unity. And we need to be unified as we move forward. We put together a forward action plan, and my Uncle Lloyd is part of that action plan that we're going to be starting here at the ALCC. What I wanted to do, and I want you guys to follow me here, there is basketball camps, there's football camps, there's baseball camps, there's all these different type of camps, right? But what I want to do was start a life skills camp. These are the type of camps that you put together for life skills that these kids need when they get out of school, right? A lot of these kids aren't gonna go to college. They're not, they don't wanna go to college, right? I prefer they go to, to community college where Mr. Kojo presides, I'll, I'll, I'll recommend that. Thank you, Mr. Kojo, for all you do. Um, but they're not. A lot of them are not, and we lose them to the streets, and I don't want that to happen to them, right? What I want is for them to have trades, use their hands. So what we're gonna do, and my Uncle Lloyd's a part of this, uh, my Uncle Lloyd said he came back to be with family. He's been all over the world, but he came back to be with family. He taught me a very lesson about family, and this community is my family. You might not be blood, all blood, but you're my family. I love you dearly, each and every one of you. That's why it's important for me to help and me and our group to put, up, put together programs to make sure that we succeed. So what we're gonna be doing is putting, in 2020, we're gonna be putting, rolling out three camps, three life skills camps. The first camp is going to be learn lessons in leadership and line dancing. <laughs> all right, because I'm a DJ too, right? And I'm tired of y'all doing a wobble not knowing what y'all doing. All right, <laughs> so, so we're gonna be doing that. We're gonna have some engagement because the, the, the Opportunity Summit today is about healthy, wealthy, and wise. That's what we want you to be. We want you to be healthy. We want you to be wealthy. And not wealthy so much in the monetary fact. We want you to be wealthy in your spirit, right? And we want you to be wise. We want that. So, so that's the first thing that's, that's going to happen. And then the second thing that's going to happen is we're going to have a books and boxing camp. Me and Darren Hoskins started a books and basketball camp when he was still alive. And it was very successful. And one of those kids came up to me and was like, hey, that was such, I mean, this is years later. That made such an impact in my life. Can we do that again? So we have a boxing program that we want to take to the next level. That's where we're going to be focused. So we had to rebrand what we're doing. So we're going to start, I'm going to, I'm going to link up with the library here that's right next to us. These kids that's in the boxing program doesn't, do not have to pay for the boxing program from ages um, I don't know what Todd is, uh, Todd's not here, but I don't know what ages is, but it's up to 17. Whatever age it is to 17, right? They don't have to pay for anything. So what I want them to do is work with the library and read a book for an hour, right? And then after that hour, go to the boxing gym for the hour. That's their admission into, I want them to continue to the literacy. I want them to continue to read. That's what they're gonna have to do if they wanna be a part of this program because we're losing our kids to literacy and they're dropping out of school at a fast rate. So we wanna make sure that they have these books in their hands. Continue to read, continue to read. That is very valuable. It takes a village to raise these kids, right? So we gotta get back to that. And it starts right here at the Opportunity Center at the ALCC. And last but most important to me uh, is the next one that we're gonna be doing. It is financial fitness in Tai Chi, all right? Financial fitness is something that we need to know about our money and how to shape our money, how to get out of this poverty. Even someone at McDonald's can learn how to save money, how to get out of debt. All these different things, once they get out of school and out of their parents' house, they need to know how to do, how to pay the mortgage, 
how to pay bills, how to pay all these different things that money incorporates. We need to know how to make our money work for us and not us work so hard for our money. I'm tired of hearing a lot of my friends work paycheck to paycheck. It hurts my heart when someone can't make a bill that's $35, right? I've seen it. We need to learn how to make sure that our money works for us. So my uncle, what better way than a Fortune 500 CEO to teach you about money, right? And also about Tai Chi. That's the reason why, these are the type of programs that we wanna bring here at the Opportunity Center. And I wanna be at the forefront and I hope that this shows that the community can work together with other organizations and other people in the community to say, I can do something. I can't do what you do. I can't do what you do. We can all be in our own lane, but we can all do something. We can do something, and that's what we're here to do. I also want to thank um, Connie Carroll and the United Way for giving us a bloodline and lifeline to continue our programming here so my uncle can come here and other programs to get things going. I want to thank her and the United Way and what they've done to be a part of this ALCC. So thank you, Connie. I don't know where you're at, but I know you're here. I just want to say thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. And I also want to thank the city. I want to thank the city for challenging us to be better, giving us the challenge to be better, and I think we're going to be even better than we ever were before. So thank you, Mayor, and thank you to the city for challenging us to be better. Now, about this man right here. Uncle Lloyd is my hero. He's everything to me. He, he uh, just from afar. I spent more time in the past two months than I have in the last five years talking to this man. But once you're around him, he will change your life too. A, a quick little story. Me and my brother Antoine, I remember we were kids, and I just got a job at downtown at um, um, Bank of America. I was a parking lot attendant. And Antoine was working at the uh, sheriff's department, right? And because of my uncle, we took briefcases to work. <laughs> I mean, we didn't have to take no briefcases to work for where we were at, but it was his influence and everything he made to me, meant to me um, that gave me strength and gave me an outlook on life that I'm so grateful for. Thank you, Uncle Lloyd, for everything you mean to me, and I want to share what you've brought in my life to other people. Thank you so much. And welcome to the hottest show on the planet, I See Gray with Class, and I am your host, Aaron Lavender. It's 2020, can you believe it's 2020? Welcome back, welcome back. You know, as I was, as I was driving over here, I, I was saying to myself, you know, I, I don't believe in resolutions anymore. I believe in lifestyles. And today, I, this is one of the shows that I've been waiting for for a very long time, since the five years we've been here and I cannot wait to have this show today. I'm bubbling right now. Unfortunately, my brother Bronco McCart couldn't be here, but we got three incredible guests. We got Stephanie Kasperzak. We got Jerry Tigner. Did I get it right? You got it right. Yes, I nailed it. You guys know I be messing names up, right? <laughs> but this last name I cannot get wrong. This is one of my favorite people in the world. He's my role model, he's my hero, 
um, and I've been telling you guys about him. And to start off our first show, he's here in the building, my Uncle Lloyd Ward. Welcome, 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 yeah, guys. It's great welcome. to be here. It's great to be here. <laughs> We're in the house. We're in the, We're house. In the house. Finally in the house. In the I house. finally got you in the house. Awesome. And, and you're back in Detroit. And uh, it's I, great to be here. We're going we're gonna to talk about that. But before we get the show started, I want to start by um, saying thank you to Impact for giving us this opportunity and this platform to come to you each and every week. I feel it's important to say that because local broadcasting is very important so you can get the news from the local people. And I want to thank the crew in the back. We got a lot of young people that's involved. I always want to keep young people involved in making this show happen. So we got a lot of young people involved. And again, this platform is not only mine. This platform is for the community. This is a shared platform. So whatever we do, this is strictly for the community. I'm always looking for new, fresh ideas. So if you got anything that's going on in the community that we don't know about, please hit me up and so we can get you on and tell your story because I believe your story is important just as well as ours. We have a lot of great programming on. Um, impact not just ours there's a lot of programming on here so check them out also because I think it's important that we all support each other and we continue to support each other and before we talk about uh, the show there's um, a heartbreaking story that happened in our community that sent shockwaves through our community we lost a really great young man named Greg Hall um, our heartfelt condolences go out to you and your family um, Greg was a great man I know him personally um, and he impacted this community. Um, Lori and Trent, uh, we're putting our arms around you and we're saying we love you. So um, we just hope that you have strength to get through this. And um, also on another note, um, our soldiers, I wanna let them know that we're thinking about them too because we're about to go into another war. It seems that way. And we're gonna talk about that on another show. Um, but our hope, we're, we're with you. We're with you, our hearts are with you. We're thinking about you, be safe out there. And um, hope you can come back all in one piece. Now, back to what we're about to do. <laughs> uh, you know, when MCOP took over from the ALCC, we vowed, Stephanie, that we were going to work together and that we was going to show other nonprofit organizations that it's possible. It's possible to work together. We want to show that around the country. When, when someone from another organization comes to another organization to work things out, a lot of people say there's turmoil, and, mm -hmm. but we want to show that the community that we can and it is possible to work together. And this is the first program coming out the gates, a life skills program that we're going to show the people. Right. And I'm so excited about this. I reached out to my uncle to be a part of this. Um, can you talk about um, how did you get involved and how did this whole thing start? How did this whole thing start? That's yeah, a just a little answer. bit. Yeah, that's a, you So, know. MCOP, thank you for having me. I no, appreciate no, it. This I is, do it without this you. is a wonderful opportunity. And, um, you know, ever since we, we started on this path together, um, we really have done it uh, just together. Yeah. And that's really important for everyone to hear and for everyone to know because um, it, it's, um, it's that, um, uh, that sentiment that has really gotten us to this point today. So we have, since October 1st, um, taken on the Opportunity Center. Um, we've been working very hard to get a bunch of programming yeah. in, yeah. Um, just to get families and children and uh, seniors uh, together for different uh, experiences. And um, we've done that through family nights. Um, in, in January in particular, since it's 2020, we're starting the new year off with a bang. Um, we have a special food distribution that's going on um, in honor of MLK Day. Um, okay. So it's going to be a service yeah. day where we're going to distribute hundreds of food baskets uh, to people in need throughout Monroe. We have another family fun night where we're going to be launching an equipment lending program because we want to promote play nice. and families yeah. being together. Yeah. So yeah. January is uh, is going to be uh, just power packed, uh, filled with with great things. Um, but this is is very special. Yes, um, because we've been working on it for months it's been a, yeah we're working hard to bring yeah. quality programming to you and I came with this idea with Stephanie and we we went again we have to thank another nonprofit yes, organization <laughs> has been a huge part Absolutely. of us working together and that's yeah. the United Way yeah. without the United Way I don't know where we would be right now they have really stepped in and said that I want to be a part of this and, and make this thing happen. So they made they played a major role in putting this program together or helping us uh, put this program together. Yeah, we sat down with you Connie know. Carroll. Thank you to Connie Thank Carroll you, Connie. and Barry Bushman. And who's the, part board. Of the board. And the, yeah, yeah. And yeah, the board. and they really supported us in in putting this program together. And um, and so this is this is how it comes to pass. And we're really excited because life skills is very important to our youth, to our senior, to everyone. Yeah. And um, so. 
it, it's, it's important that we kind of come out the gate in January in 2020 with renewed spirit, that togetherness that we've already, always had. Absolutely. And um, really do this really innovative and neat <laughs> program. Yeah, and, and you know, Stephanie, they talk about that. When we sat down, I said, okay, this is the program I would like to see, and I reached out to my Uncle Bob. Here's what we got to do, people. Uh, we thought about this to be healthy, wealthy, and wise is our model going into 2020. So what I wanted to do was make sure that the young people and make sure that the older generation know how to use their money, know how to money works. So I said, what better person than to get a CEO of a uh, former CEO of a major Fortune 500 company, someone that I personally know to help our community do that. So I reached out to my uncle and, you know, and he's moved back. He's going to tell a little bit about his story. Um, and he said, Aaron, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to you know, be about family. And, and again, he's going to get into his story. And um, Uncle Lloyd, thank you for being here um, and your partner, Jerry. Um, t t tell me your story and, and how we got involved, how you got involved. In well, <laughs> it's, it's my pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting yeah. me. And, and Jerry, who is my business partner and very dear friend, we grew up together, went to the same high school. Ah, okay. Many years ago, grew up yeah. in Romulus, Michigan. Romulus, Romulus Michigan. Romulus, Michigan. I yes, those indeed. days in Romulus, Michigan. Yeah, and I yeah. was a basketball player back in those days. I was fortunate that I was good enough to earn a scholarship to Michigan State University. Yeah. I played at Michigan State, and I got an engineering degree. And then I went on to Procter and Gamble, where mm -hmm. I was uh, uh, entry level all the way up to vice president and general manager over a 17-year span of time. And then I went on to Pepsi Cola. You know Pepsi. Right? Yeah, a little yeah. Pepsi Cola. Yeah. yeah so I, <laughs> I went to Pepsi as a as a vice president, uh, and then uh, I was promoted to president of Frito Lay back wow. in the uh, early 90s. I remember that. And, and that's I moved when we had those Sun Chips. Remember and had Sun brought, Chips. Remember, we, we just created, we, we, we created Sun Chips yep. at that time as yep. a new product and entered into the market. I hope you enjoy them today. Oh, right? it was great. I hope your audience <laughs> enjoys them today. <laughs> <laughs> got to do that, right? And uh, so, and then uh, out of Frito-Lay, I got an opportunity to go to Des Moines, Iowa. Who would have thought that, yeah, right? Des Moines. <laughs> Des Moines, Iowa, and I was number two behind uh, the CEO then of Maytag and I was the heir apparent. Mm. And uh, in 1996, I went to Maytag. In 1999, I was uh, promoted to uh, CEO of Maytag, Fortune 500 company wow. in Des Moines, Iowa. Wow. I took Maytag through Y2K. Some of you may remember Y2K. <laughs> Everything's gonna shut down. Yeah. Everything's gonna Computers shut down. Computers gonna shut down. Computers gonna shut down. Computers won't the world's work. gonna end. The world's coming to an end. <laughs> but the big thing for us when we grew up was the year 2020 was so futuristic. Yeah. You're gonna have flying cars and watches yeah, that you absolutely. could talk to, and who knows? You gotta watch. You can talk to. <laughs> right. Right. Yes. So you Cheers know, I here. mean, the world continues, and it's a it's a marvelous journey. Uh, but we face challenges along the way. Yeah. And what's the greatest challenge? The challenge is to understand who we are and the power that we have inside us. You know, we can look outside for answers, but mostly all grounding comes from inside. Mm. If you don't feel good about yourself, you won't feel good about your life, right? Wow. And how you connect with others is a reflection of how strong you feel about yourself. That's true. And That's so, true. so when you asked Jerry and I to get involved with you and Stephanie on your wonderful concept of healthy, wealthy, and wise, yes. and how do you bring those messages to the community, we, we signed up immediately. Yeah, I can't thank you enough. And, and Jerry, uh, what brought you along? What, what made you say, I'm in, I'm in, let's do this. Well, I, I love the concept, mm -hmm. and Lloyd introduced me to Tai Chi, yeah. and I love it, I'm thriving. Yeah. And um, you know, I just feel that um, it's holistic. Mm. I feel that um, it works in concert with being wealthy and wise, mm. you must be healthy. Absolutely. You must be healthy right. in terms of your spirit. Mm. And it all drives the process of you being in a space where you know there's peace, there's harmony, there's serenity, yeah. there's calmness. Mm. You know, because if you don't have the other piece of financial good health, you're stressed. You're stressed. Okay? And, and that, that affects hand hand. every part of your life, right. every relationship that you touch. Mm. So I think it's really a wonderful concept. Tai, tai Chi has been around for a long time, right? Thousands of years. Thousands of years. Thousands of years. Yes. And yes. what made you get involved in Tai Chi? We already get, understand the money side, but Tai Chi is... Well, is, yeah, I was, I'd done some business in China, yeah. and uh, I had an opportunity to go there personally, and I was a, into traditional martial arts at the time. Mm. And I heard about chi, C-H-I, chi. And I want to know, is that real? And if it's real, 
I want it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I heard all about it. There's this mystery I, I want it. There's she. this mystery around yeah, she. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is yeah, she? What is is she? There's this magical force that we all have, and it's inside us. And if so, how? See, here's an interesting thing. We know how to develop our minds, right? True. Yeah, intelligence. We go to school, we read books, we go to seminars, you know, we talk, we improve our minds. We know how to improve our bodies, right? Yeah. We go, go to weightlifting class, we go to fitness training, aerobics. Right. So we can, but how do you develop your inner life force, mm. that that animates us, what makes us human and not just, you know, a object, but a living being, mm. that force inside us. That force, that life force is our chi. Everybody has it. Mm -hmm. Now think so about- everybody has chi already. Everybody has chi. Oh. Everybody has chi. So all this is, is just a way in which you allow your chi to express itself in your physical essence. Yeah. I felt it when I, when you, when I tried it. <laughs> and you felt it, right? I felt it. You know, it's funny thing about chi is, you, you, just like we were talking about, imagine not having to go to the doctor as much. Imagine not having to take much more med, uh, medication, as much medication as before, is when you have that chi to understand that your body heals itself, and through chi you can find the inner peace and, and all that. I mean. Am I on, on something oh, you're, you're, you're on it, because even with the medical, for most things that we face in life, our body heals itself. There are some things that require true medical attention, mm -hmm. but most things are just, to allow us to deal with the pain until our body recovers, mm -hmm. okay? And so the body heals itself. Chi is having that force inside you where the energy that you have is more present in helping you deal with everything in your life happiness, joy, but also the bad times, pain, suffering. And the, the Tai Chi masters can go through major operations with no anesthetic. Wait That's a an second. Example. Yeah. Are you serious? I'm serious. Wow. I'm serious. I'm not at that point, but, <laughs> but I have learned, and a couple of keys to finding your Chi and allow it to express yourself is relaxation. Mm -hmm. Relaxation. We are all under stress, and we don't know it. We carry stress around. It, it's inside us, and we just are tense and stressed. And I had to learn how to relax as I pursued Tai Chi over 20 years now. And I studied with masters in Tai Chi. And the first time my master took my pinky, and he says, you know I can defeat your pinky, right? Right. And he said, and then he bent it, and, right. and I'm resisting and resisting. And the more I resisted, the more it hurt. And he says, relax, relax. And the more I relaxed, the more... I relaxed, yeah. relaxation, and here's the thing, as we learn how to relax physically, it permeates our soul, and so then mentally I start to relax, and then as more things come to, to me externally, something I didn't like, something that's uncomfortable, that relaxing into it allows me to be more centered in the, in the face of all the things that I deal with. You know, and you, it's funny you say that because, you know, Thank you for having me over for, for New Year's Day. That was, that was amazing, just being over there. But you talked about something. You, you talk about this often, how you used to get on a plane. Yes. And you was at the back of the plane. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll tell, tell that quick story. quick story. So I've always been a type A personality. You know? I'm, I'm hard charging. Yeah. If better was possible, good was never enough. That's I had what, to be the best. Repeat that, because me and Antoine could not figure out that saying of yours. If was better it? is possible, if good is, is never enough. Good is never enough. Now, why settle for being good? Right. Mm. Better as possible, pursue the best you can be, mm. right? Yeah. And I was type A personality. I wanted to be jump the highest, run the fastest, go the furthest, yeah. Yeah. and be first. <laughs> so I'm flying around. I did a lot of traveling. I've been around the world many, many times. I've been right. to over 100 countries. Over 100 countries. You know wow. how many countries in the world? I believe it's over 200. Or right around 200. Right. right. Okay. So I've been to half the countries in the world. Mm. Okay. I fly around the world. And so, you know, the plane will come in and land, and then it goes up to the, the ramp, and it says, ding, and you get up. Because that means in style time, you can depart. Right. I'm in the back of the plane. You know what the first one up is? <laughs> you. <laughs> I'm the first one In the back of the plane. I'm up. <laughs> <laughs> not going and anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I got all kind of people there. And yeah. I'm standing there, and I'm like, what's well, taking these people so long? Right, I got right. to do. And as I've pursued my chi and understand balance and harmony in life, I learned to accept that. I learned to accept it. If I want to get up first, sit in the front of the plane. Mm. Mm. Right? Right. And, and so you deal with your environment the way it comes to you. Mm -hmm. And then you allow it to be. 
inside and you allow it to be a part of you mm. and then you live in that space and you're more present in everything you do. I love it. So this is the perfect marriage that we're bringing. Now, now yes. talk about the financial part of it, which uh, unfortunately a lot of people from our community and around the world, you know, they, they live in paycheck to paycheck. Um, people don't know where they're going to have their, and, and they're, they're using money the wrong way. Um, and in 2020, I want people to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. You yep. know, I want people to better, to, to better use their funds. So this is a gift from us to you. Um, this is not going to cost you anything. So all we really want is your time, your time um, to come in and, and talk about, about the money situation. With. Well, you know, okay, so people think that being wealthy solves all problems. Hmm. But being wealthy can create problems. So let me tell you th this, that you can be wealthy and not physically fit or physically uh, comfortable with who you are and you're not ha happy. Money does not make you happy. Okay. Now, having money is better than not having money. Right. Okay. And Makes we're gonna, you comfortable, right? Uh, yes. But but the key here is to understand that money doesn't solve all problems. Right. And the main problem that money doesn't solve is who you are. Here's the one thing I do know: you have a health problem, everything changes. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor. Mm. It becomes your number one priority. Mm. If you have a serious health problem, it's your number one priority. Right. How do we allow our chi to be present in us every day so that we're more healthy? to face all the things, whether we're wealthy, middle class, doesn't matter. Okay, so we're, we're going to talk about fundamental concepts of understanding how you deal with money. How you make it, how you keep it, how you grow it. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's a cash flow statement? What, do you know what cash flow is? Now we always talk about budgets. Make a budget, but cash flow is how much money do you make, how much do you spend, mm -hmm. and how much you have left over, and then what do you do with it, right? Mm -hmm. And so we talk about financial sanity. What does it mean to have financial sanity around you, right? And that means that I can pay all my bills, mm. right? And I got something left over. Mm. Now, what if you want to talk about net worth? Do we talk about net worth? You know what net worth is? What's net worth? That's, we don't talk about net worth, yeah. right? That's after the taxes. That net worth is all of the things you own, the financial value of that versus all the debts you have all assets minus all liabilities is your net worth. Mm. And so what we want to do is build our net worth. We want to have more assets than we have liabilities. Mm. And the way big money works in, in, in this world is that they understand that. They understand that cash management, how you deal with your cash as it comes in. How many of us spend the money before we make it? It's a lot of people. How many of us spend more than we make? Yes, a lot of people. How many of us have yeah. heavy debt through credit cards? Yes. How many understand the cost of the money that they borrow from a credit card that they have to repay? Or borrow from somebody else. Or borrow from somebody else. <laughs> but a credit card, you've got to pay 18 to 22%. True. That's like in the old days before you had credit cards, you know what the, that kind of money lending was? What's called loan sharks. Mm. It's legitimate now because there's a system of capitalization where you borrow money through that mechanism, credit card, which gives you the ability to go out and buy things, right, and mm -hmm. pay later. But when you borrow that money, you pay, if you pay 20% in this APR, yeah. annual percentage rate, that means if you borrow $100, you got to pay $120 back. Mm. And this is so important to the young people too because they get into debt early and they're constantly digging themselves out. Even when they go into college, they take this debit card or credit cards that they get in college and then, and then it gets out of control and they don't know how to deal with that. You yeah, know. that's unfortunate. They don't even apply for these cards in many instances. Yeah, it's just given to them. Give it to they're them. just given by the credit card processing banks and they don't know how to use it. So let me ask they don't you, know the impact. Let me ask you this. Why are family members or parents, in, why are they afraid to talk about money? A lot of times people are afraid to talk about money. You know, it's one of those things they don't talk about sex, they don't talk about money. But, but particularly money, it's something that you go to job, you go to college to get a degree to make more money. You, our, this world is built around money, but we do not talk about there's, money. There's, there's two fundamental reasons. One is, I don't want you to know how much I got. No. Yeah. Two is, if I don't have anything, I don't want you to know I don't have anything. Mm. So I'm embarrassed on one side, if I don't have money, I'm not going to tell you that. Mm. I mean, I'm like really struggling, I don't, I don't really have anything, you know. Yeah. And those are the people that try to show that they've got money. Mm. And the people that have money, 
they don't talk about it because they don't want you to know. Because you know, mostly when people say they have money, you know what other people do? Hmm. They uh, ask for it. You got some money? <laughs> and so money is this taboo thing, right? Okay. And so what we have to understand is the way to make money is that if we start to understand it and share it and grow it, the greatest example of that are in communities where they help one another in businesses. So the Jewish community is very good at, and one of the things I've always admired about the Jewish community is that the money that they have, they put into their system to help grow more money for all the people they care about. Mm. Now, I think it doesn't matter if you have a million dollars or a hundred thousand or a thousand dollars or a hundred dollars, right? The idea is how do you make that more? Mm. And here's the best part, if you can make it more, not just for yourself, but for others. Yeah. And, and that's the reason why that we're doing this. Um, this isn't for us, you know. I, I want to share my uncle and Jerry and, and Stephanie. I, I want to share this with the community because I want us to win. I want each and every one of you to win out there. Whether you like me or not, or we're cool or whatever, it doesn't make a difference to me because I want to give back. And this is a way of giving back to make sure your pockets is right, to make sure that your family's pockets are right, and generations is gonna be fine. This is about generate, build a generational wealth and stop this, this generational brokenness. You know what I mean? I wanna change the thought process of us moving forward. And I believe that this program is gonna help a lot of people, but it's up to you to come out. We can't, my uncle told me, he said, Aaron, you know what? He said, I don't care if it's just three of your friends that show up. You know what I mean? They're gonna get it. I want all, I want as many people to come out and don't be afraid about your pockets. And I'm gonna be there, Stephanie's gonna be there. We all want to improve our living situation and we wanna make sure, and another thing um, we wanna talk about is credit. Yes. You know, making sure your credit scores is right because that's a big thing that people don't talk about. You wanna yes. speak on that too? Well, you know, no, credit scores, and Jerry, maybe you wanna talk about that a little bit, but the whole idea is understanding that a credit card is a good thing to have, but not a good thing to use. Mm. And let me say that differently. You can use it, but ideally you pay it off every month. So use your credit card. Don't spend more than you have. Allow the credit card to be an instrument for you to transact, but pay it off, and then you will always have a high credit score. Exactly. If you don't pay off your credit card, then your credit score goes down, and Jerry, talk about how credit now is, even in, as an HR professional, how it's used today. Exactly. When you are being considered for a position and offered a position, in some organizations, depending upon the type of position you potentially will be hired to function in, there could be a requirement that you submit to a credit review. Mm. And if your score is low, that could be a non-starter for the employer. Mm. So okay? think about it. For a job interview, some jobs now are looking at credit scores. They know so much about us these days. They'll look at your credit score as a part of the interview the or process. They, to say, is this an employee that we would want on our staff? That is, is that person yeah. responsible yeah. enough? Are they responsible enough? Because yeah. 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 if they're not responsible yeah. enough in their lives, in their yeah. lives yeah. and how they're yeah. going to be responsible after, in the business. Let me yeah. be clear. This happens after an offer of employment is made. Mm. Another thing that happens that a lot of people aren't aware of, your auto insurance. Mm. There's a credit check that goes to whatever your score is, and that becomes a factor in your rating. Oh, is that right? Oh, yes. In terms of how much you pay. Look or at even your, if you can get Look at your, your endorsement, because under law, at least in the state of Michigan, they're required to show what rating they gave you based upon your credit score. Mm -hmm. And that will dictate as a part of the factoring that goes into your rate setting. See, these are the type of gems that, that you're gonna be getting when you come to these classes. Also talk about, you, you talked about something um, when we was at the, uh, the summit. You talked about how people would avoid um, creditors oh, when they yeah. call. And you say that's one of the worst things you can one, do. One of the biggest mistakes we make yeah. is that when we, for some reason, do not have the financial income to pay the debts as we have agreed to pay them. So however much you have to pay every month on your credit card, you don't have the money, we don't pay. And then we don't pay the next month. So you should always inform the debtor, the person that gave you the money, okay? You should also always inform them if you cannot make a payment. And if you can make a partial payment, you make a partial payment. 
you always stay engaged in the process so they know that you are attending to your obligation to meet the satisfaction of repayment. Because that also always. goes to, to your credit score also when you always. don't pay. So paying something helps your credit score too, right? I mean, Absolutely. Yeah. And it just stays, and some of it is paying. So let's say a mortgage payment, hmm. even something as big as a mortgage, right? Or a car payment, right? That's not credit card based. And you miss one or two payments and then you got somebody coming to repossess it. Yeah. But if you were in conversation and say, look, I've got some difficulties. I think that, you know, in the next two months, things are going to straighten out for themselves. I can pay you, make a partial payment or I can't pay you this month, but next month I'll be back and able to pay it. Right. Then you are managing that process in a way in which those that you owe money to feel you're responsible with it and they give you much more room to be able to satisfy it. Wow, you and know. And then you have to keep that commitment. That's, that's what okay. I was gonna ask, keeping that commitment. What do you say to those young people that say, I only work at McDonald's, I'm not gonna be able to, to get a great credit score, I'm not gonna be able to build wealth through that. What, what do you say to those young people that? You can have a great score at McDonald's no matter where you are. So your credit score has nothing to do with the amount of income, it has to deal with how you handle your money and your obligations. Mm. So it doesn't matter how much you make. Now, and, that, and that job for McDonald's could, could lead a pathway onto you something bigger as far as you saving money and how you use your money to get somewhere else. Yeah, and we talk, we'll talk about that. For instance, one of the things you ought to do, if you have certain, you ought to know all of the expenses you have, every, all the payments, all the out, outflow of money, you should know that. And you should know, obviously, how much money you have coming in. The first thing is, do you have more coming in than you have obligated to go out, your expenses, on a weekly basis or a monthly basis, right? But one of the obligations that we recommend is you pay yourself. Mm. Pay yourself every week. Have a separate savings account where you pay yourself $5, $10, yeah. $20 over time. When you get a raise, pay yourself even more. You pay yourself even more. So as you pay yourself as an obligation of the financial commitments you have in life, you turn around and one year later, two years later, three years later, you now have money that becomes money that you can build your net worth. You know, we only got a couple seconds ago. See, people are gonna ask, is, there, is this a catch? Yeah, it's a catch. It's a safety net for you and your family. <laughs> we're trying to catch you. We're trying, we're trying to get you to a point where you could be financially free um, going into 2020 and beyond. Uh, we want to make this a lifestyle, not a resolution. This is what we want to bring to this community. Um, this is going to start when? Stephanie, yeah, break so, it down to um, when. It, it starts this Sunday, January 12th. And um, the teenage, um, the, the portion for teenagers is from 1 to 3. Bring your kids, and teenagers, yeah. adults is 3.30 to 5.30. Um, and there will be a combination of the financial wellness and the physical wellness with Tai Chi. And the youth is from, they're 13 to 19. 19 correct. 13 to yes. 19, then it's going to be a 20 and up. That starts at the 5.30 to... Um, 3.30 to 5.30. 3.30 to 5.30, I'm sorry. So, uh, yeah, come on out. Again, Tai Chi... Tell them where they can go to your website and yeah, Tai Chi and more. T A I C H I Tai Chi A N D and more M O R E dot com, and you'll see our website. We're just launching it, and we'll continue. And we will have uh, special events where where uh, we'll yeah. be featuring the work that we're doing here. And you'll find other, I think, useful things in your life, both in terms of physical and financial health. Well, thank you guys. Thank you so much. Our pleasure. They're going to be back again. You're going to see a lot more of them, in our, especially in our community. I want to thank Stephanie mm -hmm. for working with me Absolutely. and making this happen. And I want to thank you, um, the viewers, for tuning in because without you, there is no show. And come on out. Come support this, this program because it's for you. It's for the community. It's for your children. Um, let, let's be healthy, wealthy, and wise in 2020 and beyond. Again, make it a lifestyle, not a resolution. And with that being said, I'm going to leave you love and respect and unity to inspire change. In order to see clearly, you have to see gray. We see gray. Do you? Peace. One love.